In this video, we're going to introduce some concepts uh, of kinematics of rigid bodies. You've probably already studied some dynamics before. However, you likely looked at dynamics from the point of view of particles. That is, you idealized real-world objects as point masses. However, many objects in the real world cannot be idealized as particles. And so this is what leads us to the study of rigid bodies. Rigid bodies are characterized by the following. They maintain their shape. Moments are relevant. And what we mean by that is that we are able to apply a rotation to the rigid body. And finally, the size and the shape of the body matter. So in this video, we're going to look at the kinematics of rigid bodies. Kinematics is not really interested in the forces that cause the motion, but only interested in the characterization of the motion. And by characterization, we mean we want to know the position of the body, the velocity, and the acceleration. So a few introductory concepts. We're going to look, first of all, at planar rigid body motion. That is, rigid body motion in a 2D plane. There are three types of motion that we can consider. The first is translation. And what we mean by translation is the following. So let's say we consider our random bean-sized object. Oops, let's, uh, let's redo that here. So we have our random bean-sized object here, and it moves to this location here at time t plus delta t, let's say. So we could have two points in here. We could call this point A and point B. And again, these are the same points on the same body, point A and point B. And the object has undergone translation. So by that, we mean that it has undergone translation, such as, as shown here. And translation is most rigor rigorously defined as any straight line inside the body maintains the same orientation during the motion. So, if we were to define this line between A and B, it maintains its orientation throughout the motion. So this is an example of translation, but translation does not need to be a straight line between points A and, if we call this, A prime and B prime. We can also have curvilinear motion. So, you know, it might take a path that is not necessarily a straight line, but throughout the process, points A and B maintain their orientation throughout. Okay, so this is translation. Let's look at fixed axis rotation. In fixed axis rotation, the particles within the rigid body move in parallel planes along circles centered on the same axis. So what we mean by this is the following. So again, let's assume that we have our random bean-shaped object. We will have a center or an axis of rotation here. And essentially, every single particle in the rigid body moves along circles centered on that same axis. Okay. So an example of this could be, let's say, a compact disc on a CD player. Um, what else could it be? It could be a, um, well, we just bought a new um, lettuce strainer. So it's like this, um, it's like this bowl that lets you um, 
get all the water out of uh, freshly washed uh, lettuce. So a lettuce strainer. What else could we say? Um, well, definitely we could look at uh, the flywheel on an engine. And I mean, there's so many examples, right? Whereas translation, you know, you could think of, you know, a train uh, along a track. The third planar motion that we're going to look at is general planar motion. And this is characterized by the following. It is any planar motion that is neither only translation or fixed axis rotation. So what we're saying is that it's a combination of the two. And a good example of this is the following. Let's assume that we have, um, we have a train this is my idea of a train here and um, so it has some wheels over here and it's moving in this direction okay so in fact one might think that um, the wheels on the train are undergoing fixed axis rotation um, and yes indeed they are rotating about an axle that is true but relative to a fixed point of reference so if we were to say that you know our um, point of reference is, uh, let's call it this point over here, and we call this X and Y. In fact, um, it is undergoing general planar motion because not only is, if you were to look at a single particle or the, uh, the wheel as a whole, it is uh, simultaneously translating to the right and rotating at the same time. So uh, let's say we start with a particle here on top um, at time t plus delta t, it's actually going to be in, it's going to be, you know, somewhere over here, you know, it's not going to be perfectly along at this point over here. So it is both translating and rotating at the same time. So this is an example of general planar motion. So in the coming videos, what we're going to look at is mathematically characterizing these three types of um, planar motion for rigid bodies.